everybody, welcome back to The Helpful Teacher. My name is Monique and I am so happy that you're joining us again for another tutorial. So, I know we've been going at this and school is about to start, right? Chances are you're like me and we're probably, most likely, going to be teaching remotely next year. So, what I decided to do is to create a series for you guys of different tutorials of how you can teach remotely using different tools. Most of the tools are free and they're online and they're going to greatly impact not only you but also your students. For this video, I'm going to be featuring Screencastify. And this lovely tool enables you to record yourself teaching, giving messages, lesson planning, whatever your hearts desire. And it's using the devices that you already have. So, without further ado, let's get started. So guys, the first thing you're going to want to do is ensure that you are logged into your district's email and you can do so by looking at the icon on the top right hand of corner of your screen. Make sure it is logged into your district email. If it is not, go ahead and click it and log in with your credentials that you would use for Google Suite for your district's email. If you're not using a district email and you're using a personal email, um, you can do that as well. The next thing we're going to do is actually download the extension. So we're going to go to the Chrome Web Store. So we're just going to do a quick search. The Chrome Web Store. Click that. It'll usually be the first website that pops up. And again, make sure you're in your district email. You're going to scroll down and you're going to see all of the different extensions that Chrome offers. We're of course going to select Screencastify, but just notice here that you also have Zoom, you also have Bitmoji, and another web, another screen recorder that you can use is Loom as well, and that's also a Chrome extension. So go ahead and click on Screencastify, and what you're going to select is Add to Chrome. You're going to get a pop-up that is give, asking for permission. Go ahead and select Add Extension. It is then going to download and then go to your extensions. That will be found right here on the top right hand of corner of your screen. And there it is. So, in order to use this um, extension, you'll be able to click on the icon just like so. But let's say this isn't here for your it's not here once you click the x it disappears what you're going to do is select the extension puzzle piece make sure that it is highlighted blue that way it'll be right here once you um log in so we're going to go ahead and select screencastify the next thing you're going to do is sign in with google this is important. You, like I said, again, you want to make sure that you're signed in to your district's account. It's asking to allow permissions for your camera and microphone and drawing animations, which you would most likely want to do. So select next. Now it's double checking and verifying that you are allowing those permissions. Select allow. And hooray, you are all ready to start recording with Screencastify. So you can go ahead and select these overview videos to show you the basics, but that's what I'm going to do for you. So it's telling you to go ahead and select Screencastify to begin. Now, I want you to know that with the free version, you are allotted five minute recordings. So just thinking about if you're doing a mini lesson or giving instructions to a student, or maybe you are um, annotating on a paper that they have turned in, um, things like that, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to stay in that five minute mark. But um, there are some ways around that. You can record two five minute videos and bring them together to submit to the student. 
There's other ways that you can pause your recording if you're trying to gather your thoughts and things of that nature. So I think we should be okay and we shouldn't have to upgrade. So right here, it shows you three ways that you can record with screen, Screencastify. The first way is your browser tab. So it's just using a portion of your screen that you're gonna record. Most likely always gonna select desktop. And if you just wanted to record yourself, maybe you're just wanting to use webcam and you're screencasting a lesson from your whiteboard at your job, you're able to do that as well using the webcam only. So keep, select, keep it selected as desktop. If you look here, it has more options that I want to show you. We have the countdown menu, and this just gives you time. When the video starts, which you'll see soon, is it'll give you a three second countdown, five or 10 second countdown to get you prepared and get ready to start your screencasting. So we're gonna keep ours at three, but if you need a little bit more time, that option is available to you. Show drawing tools, that's gonna be there, which is gonna be very helpful when you annotate and audio. You're most likely going to use your system audio unless you have an external microphone, you know, a headphone device, you'll be able to select that. So we're going to go ahead and select record. I'm going to keep it on desktop. And it's going to ask me, do I want to record my entire screen or an application window? I'm going to select my entire screen. Okay. And we're going to select share. There's my three minute countdown and we are beginning. Once it starts recording, you'll see your menu bar here on the bottom left hand corner of your screen. I'm going to go over each of these tools and show you how you would use it in a screencasting. So what I have here is just a simple document that I have that I had in Google Docs that I wanted to use just as an example to give you to walk you through the features of what you might use Screencastify for. So let's start, let's just say you're going to give directions to your students virtually and you're using Screencastify to do so. One of the tools that you may use is the focus mouse. And what that does is focus in on a specific place or specific words that you want your students or the parents to look at. So you may use that tool in order to turn the focus mouse off, you would select it, or a shortcut would be Alt and the letter F to do the same thing. The next tool is hide cursor when not moved. So maybe you're talking for a amount of time, you don't want the cursor to, cursor to be shown, you would hide cursor and as you can see right now, it's not able to be, um, shown to the student or parent. Okay, and then I'll deselect that. So maybe you're giving direct instructions. Click here, click there, and you want to highlight your clicks. As you can see, it's highlighted when I click. The next tool is a really important tool, and it's the recording pause tool. So let's say you're trying to gather your thoughts, and you don't wanna stop the video, you don't wanna record multiple videos, but you just wanna to pause to gather your thoughts. This will not stop your video. So if you select pause, it'll pause your video, you're able to gather your thoughts, maybe you're able to think about a resource or something that you wanted to tell them. Once you're done, go ahead and select play and it'll resume your recording. This is just your mouse pointer. Another good tool that you're probably going to use often is the annotation tool. As you can see here, it has different colors that you can use. If you want it to circle certain words or you're editing their paper and they forgot to capitalize a letter, you can annotate however you want to do. And they're able to hear your voice speak to them and say what it is that you wanted them to correct, which is awesome. We also have the eraser tool and that's pretty self-explanatory. You can erase the annotations that you have created. 
And the next one is the high toolbar. So maybe you just want, you're just giving them visual directions on the webcam and you don't want to show the toolbar. You can select high toolbar. Now, before you do so, to bring back the toolbar, you're going to select Alt and the letter T and that'll bring it. Also, you can select Screencastify here and you can pause the recording. You can start over or just delete this recording. And this is also where you stop the recording. Be aware that it is showing you where you're at on your time. Remember that you're going to try to, you're going to have to stay under five minutes. So it shows you how many minutes that you have been recording. And this is where you're going going to go to stop your recording. Please note that this box will be shown in your Screencastify video. So try not to keep it up the whole time just when you want to stop the video. So I will select stop. And as you can see, there's my video. Now, once you get, once you select stop, this window appears. And of course, it'll show the video, the recording that you have done. If you hover down the bottom of the screen, it'll give you a cutting tool. What the cutting tool is, it will allow you to cut off certain parts of your video, either from the front or from the back. This part won't let you edit in between. So keep that in mind. So let's just say you were, you know, trying to go to the document or things like that. You can go ahead and trim it and you can play where, where it is. You can click to unmute. The next tool is a really important tool. And you can start where you want to start or let's say you want to end it sooner. Let's say you don't want to show that part you can you can end it sooner. From there, you'll select Save Trim if you're comfortable with that. Note that once you click Save Trim, like I'm going to do, it's going to give you a pop-up that says that the trimming, that trimming a video replaces the original video. All the footage that you have before and after that you're trimming down, it's gonna be deleted. So just be mindful of that. Um, you can't get it back. <laughs> So you can select trim if you don't want to select cancel, but I'm going to select trim and it trims my video. Alrighty. So from there, we're going to go for your visual learners. Let me mute that. Okay. The next, if you wanted to edit your video in more detail, for instance, you wanted to fix something in the middle of the screen castify you would have to upgrade for that. And that is what you'll select here. It'll give you a three day trial and then require you to pay for the upgraded subscription. The video will go into your Google Drive. If you go and select more options, you can choose how you want it to be shared. Uh, so read through each of these to see what best fits you and make sure that you're sharing it with whom you want it to be shared with. Where it says share, you're able to send this directly to your Google Classroom, which is awesome. You're able to publish this directly to a YouTube, if maybe that's what you want to do with share to share with your parents, or you can get an embedded code. How this will be useful is let's say you have a classroom website you can use this code and send this directly to embed it directly into your website. Another option that you have is send it in an email. Let's say you just want to shoot an email directly to all the parents. You can do that here and generate a Q QR code as well. You also have the ability to download. If you select download, you can export as an MP4, and that's probably what you're most always going to do. And select export. And I'm going to go ahead and select view on drive so we can see what that looks like as well. So there it is. What I also wanna let you know is that you may 
once you click on view on Google Drive, it may still be processing. You may get that notification that the video is still processing. So just be patient. And it is there on your Google Drive to again download or share with your students or whomever you wish to. Thank you again for watching. I really hope that this video was informative and was able to help you and guide you through screencasting yourself in the classroom or at home remotely. Don't forget to subscribe to The Helpful Teacher. Like this video, give it a thumbs up, and see you in the next video. Bye, guys.